What's cracking with you, people? This is the Devious Wolf, and welcome back to Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. In the last one, we rescue Mad Dog. Also, there's a tree girl sticking up between the road here, and I don't think that's supposed to do that. As a matter of fact, I don't think that was like that in the original. It might be. I hardly ever come around this part of town, or when I did, I was too busy speeding, so I never noticed. So as you can see, we're still driving the hoop day we got the we got to save Mad Dog in the last one. Now we're gonna go do, back to the Four Dragons Casino and see exactly what it is they want us to do today. So, how is everybody doing? <laughs> uh, you know you got nothing when you start off with that. But yeah, so um, yeah, in the last one, um, I want to bring up something that completely slipped my mind until after I had stopped the recording. And that has to do with Mad Dog and OG Loke in this game. They, their names actually make a cameo appearance in Grand Theft Auto 5. I don't know why if why I forgot about it because it was such a mind blowing thing when I did notice it in the uh, when I was playing playing when I was playing uh, playing GTA 5. But it's like if you buy one of the apartments in the online mode, and I think it might even happen inside of um. Um, Franklin's house, one of his houses. You also see a CD, you see two CD cases, one of Mad Dog, one with Mad Dog's name on the front, and one with OG Loke's name on the front. And it looks like bad boys are acting up again. Though it seems like Austin Powers is driving the car. Oh, look, we got a phone call. I know it's Juju stinking perro. Look, just say what you gotta say. I ain't interested in a stupid game. Stupid games? This is my heart you play with. What? Look, you damn. Gotta change my number. Yeah, Catalina. At the risk of sounding vulgar, CJ must have given it to her good because she is coming back for mo, mo, mo. Either that or the mute guy really doesn't scream the way she likes it. I'm just saying, people. I'm just saying. Mr. Ramfa Lee. Yeah. Gentlemen, can I have your marks, please? Gentlemen, or shall I say partners? Mm. Oh, I drank to that. And I guess that was it. What an odd thing to have a mission marker for. Well, we should be getting a phone call. Here we go. Hello? Carl, it's me, Ken. The Leone family has made their move. Salvatore's here. Now, he's taken over Caligula. We're screwed. It's war for control of Venturis, man. War! War! There's word of some triad visit or something that should keep them busy. I'm calling from the bathroom. I gotta go. I really gotta go. Interesting. It looks like everything's coming together. But yeah, I... I it might be because it is such a small, insignificant cutscene, but I really don't remember that. And another thing is like, why have a cutscene dedicated to that? It, and this is one of the things I, one of the things I, I do want to bring up with this game because it does it a lot. And I think GTA, uh, I, th I think Vice City did it too. You have a lot of missions where you go in, get a cutscene, and they have to walk out and wait for a phone call. Why not have that phone call be part of the cutscene? You know what I mean? It just seems like it just seems so out of place and like unfinished. You know what I mean? Maybe it was something about production, maybe it's something I don't know about, but it seems really odd to have to have a cutscene, to have a cutscene for a mission where all you do where you don't get a mission assignment. Like the mission is a cutscene. You walk out and then you have to wait for a phone call to get the next one. 
Where you could easily just have that in the same cutscene, you know what I mean? It wouldn't, I don't think it would have bro broken any pace of this game. Top fucking buzz this! I'm peeking on the blood pressure alone! Yeah, terrific. Well, well, well. What do we got here? Here's your sandwich. Who's this pretty thing? I don't usually do this kind of shit, you know. <laughs> I like this girl. What's your name, kid? Maria. And the service is not included. Hey, the woman, you fat fuck! You heard the bird. Come on. <laughs> Are you kidding me? See you later, guys. And who's this asshole? The name's Carl Johnson, sir. Before working with Mr. Rosenberg here, I had the pleasure of doing business with your son, Joey, back in Liberty City. You know my Joey? I like that. So, kid, what can I do for you? Well, Ken, if vouch for me, I'm a straight killer. Oh, but one man fucking army. A, a real dependable. Total fucking maniac, too. You know, the Ferrellis are sending over a crew to hit me. Their flight gets in soon. Traveling is a string quartet. <laughs> I was gonna send some of the boys over as a little welcoming committee. But, uh, maybe you can take care of it. Thank you, sir. I guarantee you. You won't regret this. Uh, maybe I should go ah! You stay where you are, Rosenberg. I don't want you getting yourself lost. And apparently CJ has telepathy. Uh, so yeah. Things are not going the way you would expect them to. Now this mission, I, I remember being quite memorable. Just for what you were, do just because of what you were doing. If this is the mission I'm thinking, uh, if, if if this is the mission I'm thinking about, but yeah, um, so apparently Carl knows Joey from GTA 3. That's the only other game I can think of that has Liberty City, steal the plane in the hangar, that has Liberty City in it before the game. And since the character from Grand Theft Auto 3 makes an appearance, maybe. But honestly, I don't remember anything about GTA 3, so I couldn't tell you off top off off the top of my head. Also, um, we are going to need this body armor because this should be the mission. I think it is. So now, what we got to do is we have to. I'm going the wrong way here, actually. We have to fly up, intercept the plane, and then, and then, we gotta, well, kill the hitman. Now, here's the tricky part. We have to intercept the plane while it's in the air. This mission can be kind of difficult because if you're not, if you're not careful about it, you can lose very easily. So I recommend getting a little bit of altitude because you are going to need it. And try not to fly straight at the dot. Keep a little bit off to the side. Because remember the plane's coming towards you and you gotta fly out over water. So you want to keep your distance, keep a little to the side and have some room to turn. I remember it being a little difficult when younger, because I when I was younger, because I was just not good at turning planes. I would always use the rudder and and the uh, and the wings to steer, and it does steer sharper, but it would disorient me for a bit. So yeah, so um, Rosenberg is in a bit of a pickle. One of the guys who I think put him in charge of Caligula as a piece, as a as a kind of middle operator, a kind of a peace accord. You know, like no one's gonna try anything as long as he's the one in charge. Has come over and said, nah. And it's all because we killed one of the Sor one of the Soracas. We didn't kill him, he had a heart attack, but the point still stands. See, okay, now here's the plane. So what you want to do is you want to get behind a corona. And I believe this should I believe this should trigger automatically. 
one problem with this mission is that the that the plane you're flying isn't quite that fast. So you gotta really push it. Luckily, this plane here is not moving quite as fast, but still, you wanna be careful. Okay, here we go, here we go, here we go. Getting closer, getting closer. Stay, keep on target. Stay on target. Hey, what's going on? Shit! How the fuck did he get me? Who cares? See, so yeah, this is somehow turned into an FPS. You have infinite ammo here. And these guys really aren't that good. So be careful here. I think you gotta do like two rounds of this, maybe. And somehow the pilot didn't move through all that. And now we gotta fly a plane all the way back to the airport. Huzzah! So yeah, that was one of the weirder parts of this mission. And this, and this is honestly one of the more memorable missions just because it was something completely different. But I will admit... I'm not the biggest fan of the first person mode, you know? I mean, I get what it is, is to give you a sense that you are really going for it, you know, that you're really, um, that you're, that you're really hijacking a plane, and that you're really getting to it, but it, 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 uh, honestly, I didn't see the need to completely change the gameplay style for this one mission. It could have been just easily have the plane land and shoot them, but still, it's memorable. It is memorable. Um, now, I see there's a little bit of a thing that I like to do with this um, with with this mission, in particular. It's a dumb thing, and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna show you the entire bit of it. But the end. I believe we have to. There we go. What I like to do is. I like to think that the bodies are still on the plane, and what I would do is I would fly this thing out to my own airport, land it, and keep it. <laughs> um, and actually, now that we have this plane, I think I can illustrate that now. Uh, this should be over here. Oop, there's a military base, so we're right there it is. So, yeah, that wasn't too bad. So, I'll show you real quick, and then I'll cut back. Well, probably not going to cut back because I'm probably going to get a phone call here. But I do want to show you this because I, I do think I, I think I showed you guys the um, the fact that you guys do have an airplane hangar to keep personal planes in if you want to. It's just really finicky to get to. So, yeah, let me show you what I did. And pull it back. Using the ring, wings to steer here. You should be able to pull up to the gate like this. And it opens. And this hangar's big enough to fit two of these planes in here side by side at the back. Okay, what is going on? Okay, I'm not going to lie to you guys. I'm not sure what that was. Okay. Plane's on fire. Not worth it anymore. Goodbye. Phone call. Carl, you get that dossier? Yeah, I got the files. What you want me to do with them? We need to meet up someplace quiet and take care of things. There's a ghost town. Las Brujas in the Devil's Castle. You know it? Yeah, I'll find it. I know you will. i see you there. Carl. And then we get a thing with Ten Penny. Okay, so... I'm gonna try this one more time since the, since the thing isn't blowing up yet. But that was. 
Dude, this is kind of weird here. Is it the sandstorm? I think it is sandstorm. Yeah, that's probably what it is. I think it's the uh, sandstorm that's currently blowing through here. So, yeah. Yeah, go figure. The sandstorm that's blowing through here is really messing with the is messing with the plane. That is really odd. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and save real quick and cut to the uh, meeting place since we've actually already been here. It's right over here. We've already been here, so I'm gonna save and cut there. And here we are. Now let's deal with Crash. Carl, hope we didn't keep you waiting, Holmes. No, I was just chilling. <laughs> I bet you were. At the dossier? Hand it over. Hey, everything cool now? I don't know, Carl. Eddie? Ah, our boy's done good. No! Oh! You snitch piece of shit! You bato asshole! You sold us out! Time to dig, Carl. You take care of things. Huh? Where are you going? To get drunk and get laid. You got a problem with that? No, Frank, relax. Good. I'll see you back at the precinct. And I'll see you in the next life, Carl. That's good. That's deep enough for two. Eddie, Tampenny just using you. He's using all of us. <sighs> You're the next one he's gonna silence, man. Shut the fuck up, scum! And it's Officer Pulaski to you! Fucking die! No matter what you do, you're never going to catch him fast enough, so... inside my head. I ain't kidding. The best steak out I ever done. Carl, you should have seen your mom's before she was buried. She was a real mess. Most of her face was hanging off. Don't fucking talk about my mom. The boys, you know, they fooled around with her at the scene. You know, touching her, joking around and shit. Fuck you, Pulaski. Fuck you. Not feeling so fucking full of yourself now, huh? <coughs> yeah, well, them's the brakes, fuck. Any last requests? Yeah. <laughs> Can I fuck your sister? You an asshole to the end. Punk motherfucker. And that's the end of Pulaski. Thank Christ. I never liked this guy. So, yeah. Um... It turns out that the dossier that you that you went to retrieve 
the dirt that they got on Tim Penny Pulaski, that was provided by uh, Hernandez. Hernandez uh, told told on them, and that dossier was supposed to be delivered, and you took took them out. So now, and now that they had the dossier back, they didn't need CJ anymore. So they were going to kill him. They were going to kill him. And, Paul, and uh, Hernandez, because they were the only two who knew. CJ was getting so big, he would have said something, or he was getting to a point where he could have done something about it if he felt like it. And Tempe knew. And Pulaski wanted to kill him the entire time, which, let's be honest, nobody nobody was surprised about, because Pulaski is one of those textbook, textbook corrupt cops. Like, I mean textbook corrupt cops. Oop, about to flip this car, aren't I? saved it and yeah so and yeah that's pretty much it so we just killed Pulaski Tim Penny's not gonna be happy about that and he pretty much blew his only real ticket to keep Carl under his thumb and that's what happened so let's enter this phone call will shall we hello you've hung us off to dry I know it Rosenberg? Yeah, soon to be wearing concrete shoes in a shallow grave in the desert, Rosenberg? I'm surprised you remember. Look, I ain't forgot y'all, man. Just hang in there. Easy for you to say. This Salvatore guy might whack me at any moment. And now we gotta deal with, um... Rosenberg. So... Yeah. With Pulaski dead, Tenpenny officially cutting us loose. I don't know about the rest of y'all, but the moment you threaten to kill the guy who's been keeping you out of trouble, you've pretty much severed, you've pretty much given him, he pretty much handed CJ his freedom papers, let's be honest here. And, <laughs> oh, that's the worst way that I could have put it, but it's so appropriate. Um, and now we're just going to... Deal with Rosenberg. And the next one. I've been a Divas Wolf. And I'll catch you later.